Hey, this is Joseph with the Flying Pigeon LA Bike Shop, and I'm going to show you a repair job we did on an old 1980s Raleigh Roadster. The owner had this bike powder coated this really cool blue color several years ago and had decals and pinstriping done to match the original finish. The rear on this bike has an 80 etched into it on the hub, indicating that this Sturmy Archer hub was manufactured in 1980. Um, that's when the bike is from. And we'd taken the old rod brake blocks off this bike and used a punch and ripper mallet to get the pads out. To fit our replacement rod brake blocks, you can see how I'm using a large screwdriver and a little bit of elbow grease to open these uh, pad holders. Once the pads are in, I'll clamp them down with the vise, and they're pretty much good to go. John, our master mechanic in the shop, found a source for rod brake pads that match these old Raleigh rod brakes perfectly. They come in black and they come in salmon, which is ridiculous considering the fact that it, to get the previous inventory of rod brake blocks, I had to have an uncle go to New Delhi and mail me some rod brake blocks from the gray market there in the bike market. It was a PayPal international postal service fiasco just to get our existing inventory. With these new inserts, I, mean, I just picked up the phone and called some guy in Portland, and you know, he had them on their way, you know, FedEx ground in a few days. So the good news for rod brake owners out there, um, someone is making pads and uh, distributing them here in North America finally, and the Flying Pigeon LA Bike Shop has got a few. Putting new pads on an old roadster is usually pretty straightforward since the brake clips are already in place and set to just the right height for brand new pads to work perfectly. The front brake on this bike, as you'll see, went together really quickly. And you can see the cream Schwab Delta Cruisers we put on this bike. Those are in a 28 by one and a half inch size, and those are some really nice tires. We also carry these same tires in cream with a reflective sidewall. Now the rear brakes on this bike is where things got annoying. Rod brake setups usually suck the most at the rear of the bike. First, it is annoying to line up pads parallel with the inside of the rim, since you're coming at each pad with a kickstand, crank arm, or chain case blocking access. Second, towing in the pads, with, which is set with those brake clips on the chain stays, changes the distance each pad is to rim, and also affects the pad on the other side, which you can't really see because of the aforementioned blocking of visual access, requiring a lot of walking back and forth to check each pad, make an adjustment to the clips, and then move back around again over and over. Now the brake clips are traditionally secured with really crappy flathead bolts, and this is the final difficulty, and these bolts are prone to slip, uh, edge of a screwdriver into the palm of your hand or finger. And finally, the brakes themselves have an extra rod sleeve right behind the bottom bracket, and you'll see my hand on that pretty soon. Um, and uh, this isn't a wire pull system, so carrying tension on this rod is a bad idea. This rod allows you to adjust at how close or how far that rear stirrup is to the rim. Now, you need to fiddle with everything until both pads are perfectly parallel with the rim, and that rear rod sleeve has just enough tension that the pads are firmly in place, but not so much that it's going to make the rod slip when you pull the brakes hard, um, and then you're going to have to make sure that your, uh, your hand is, or palm is bandaged as well. <laughs> Once those rear pads are installed, it is a great idea to spin the crank's arm, arm around a few times, to go run through the gears of the bike to make sure everything is running properly. This bike wasn't finished after the pad installation. We were asked to add a Honey Brooks B66 and a set of those awesome ring leather grips that Brooks makes in Honey as well. I wish I could have gotten a picture of the finished product, but you know, I didn't think uh, fast enough this time. But uh, there you have it. It's a beautiful old roadster, one of several we've done this season, and uh, ready to ride. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to hit us up um, with spare parts or anything at all at info at flyingpigeon-la.com. Thanks for watching, and I uh, guess we'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Take care.